Oh god, that smells so bad. <laughs> Can 120 volts kill you? So the short answer is yes, it can absolutely kill you. In fact, there's an entire industry that is built on making tools and protective equipment just because working with this stuff can kill you every day. Now, make sure you watch the whole video because at the end, I'm gonna show what happens to skin when you get shocked by 120 volts. So believe it or not, this is actually something that is argued about in the electrical community, but in the construction industry in general. People are like, oh, it's only 120 volts. It's not gonna kill you, just work on it. And it extends further beyond that. So there's kind of this machismo that exists within our industry where electricians will just choose to work on things live because they're being too lazy to go over, find the panel. It might be in a different room somewhere, turn a breaker off, come back test to see if they got the right one. Oh crap, it's not the right one, gotta go back, you know? And so there's just this like lackadaisical, like eh, it's only 120, I'm not gonna worry about it, I'll just be really careful. And then they get shocked, <laughs> or then they short something out, blow up a dimmer. So in general, my philosophy is don't ever work on anything live unless you are very well trained with PPE, with actual equipment and tools, you're tooled up to work in that environment. You've been properly trained on how to do it and you know lock up or tag up procedures and the whole nine yards. There's a lot of things involved with working in live circuits, but in general, 98% of the time, that's not the environment we're in. Most of the time we're going in to troubleshoot something, we're sticking our multimeter in to test to see if something is live or if it's not, or if there's a problem. Once we identify something, go turn the breaker off. Even if it's just pulling a switch out and changing a switch out, there's no reason to do that live. There's even tools that they have made, lots of people make, to specifically address the whole working live versus not working live. So normal tools, you're gonna have, you know, lineman's pliers, needle nose, screwdrivers, they all have a sort of rubbery insulation around them, but it's not actually insulation in that we're talking about conductive circuits kind of insulation. This is not insulating against electric current, this is just some kind of insulation for your hands to hold it so it's comfortable when you're using the tool. If you look on the insides of all of these handles, it says warning, always wear a Approved eye protection, not insulated, will not protect against electric shock. So even manufacturer is saying, you need some kind of extra insulation for these, for you to get, to be working on live circuits. And it doesn't say anything about live circuits, don't worry, you're like working on live circuits, it doesn't recommend it or anything like that. There's no voltage class, voltage rating, anything on any of these tools. But if you go over here, we've got electrically rated tools. These are things specifically for doing work on live circuits. If you look at the lineman's pliers and the needle nose, both of them say a, a thousand volts on them. That means that this insulation has been tested up to a thousand volts anything under a thousand volts you should be okay working on live circuits with these now the handles do still say wear eye protection switch off power <laughs> so it's still telling you you know like the smarter thing to do is to turn off power and not work on stuff live but for those instances when you do have to do that you've got specialized equipment that has insulation on it this is a similar thing um, these are thousand volt rated they have a coating all the way across so you don't have metal if you're like in a panel and you're going deep into something you're not touching a live bolt on the edge and you've got like some piece of metal over here that you can short out to it protects most of the shaft where this if you stick this in the same thing the tip of this you're on like a, a, a screw or a bolt or you know some kind of lug or something like that and all you got to do is just move this a little bit and touch something else metal and you short this thing out and it can become a very very dangerous situation so there are even tools for working on live circuits did you know that there is a difference between the word shock and electrocution so a lot of people misuse these words. Shock is just a sensation. It's just talking about what happens to you when you introduce yourself into electric circuits. You can get shocked on a doorknob. You can touch a live wire and get shocked. But the word electrocution actually means severe injury or death. Most of the time when people use the word electrocution, it means that they died. But not always. A lot of times it's severe electrocution. If your entire arm is charred or like you have severe, severe injury, you can also use the word electrocution. So. Now you know.
Now let's look at how this works. Another thing that you're gonna hear all the time, people say it's not the voltage, it's the amperage, it's not the amperage, it's the voltage. The truth is it's more than that. It's the resistance that you, you're the load, you become the load. So the resistance that you offer to the amount of voltage being touched to you, because that's all electrical circuits are, right? We take a voltage, take two wires, and we cross it across the load. So whatever the size of the load or the, the characteristics of that load and the applied pressure or the applied voltage is gonna determine how much current flows. Current doesn't just flow, it's resistance and voltage, and then however much resistance and how much voltage is how much current is allowed. So it's really a function of how much voltage is applied to how much resistance. So if we look at uh, kind of a number that's talked about a lot in the industry is this 10 milliamps or 0 0.01 amperes. So 10 milliamps is a very small amount of current when we're talking about like wiring a house or something like that, but through your body, that's an actually incredible amount of current. And they say that uh, 10 milliamps or 0 0.01 amp can cause ventricular fibrillation. Oh, there's supposed to be an F there. <laughs> fibrillation, uh, which is a change in your heart rhythm. It's an erratic uh, heart rhythm, and that could cause you to die. It could give you a heart attack. It could do all kinds of stuff to your heart, and that's not good. And it can actually, oh, some of my stuff got cut off here, sorry. Uh, but any currents above 10 milliamps can also cause skin burns and cause immediate death. So there's a, a threshold of just changing your heart rhythm, and then you raise the current even more, and it can just immediately kill you. So that's not a lot of current, right? Now, how, how our body does at resisting the different parts of our body, the different tissue and things like that, there's gonna be different resistances. So there's gonna be different levels of current going through you depending on where you get shocked. So 10 milliamps, 0 0.01 amps, it's not a lot. Where you get shocked matters. So if it's 120 volts going through your fingertips, I mean, you're, you're gonna be fine. Yeah, you might have some burn if you're really wet or something like that, which so you're uh, raising the amount of current that can go through because you're lowering the amount of resistance. Anything wet is a lot more conductive as you'll see here in a minute. Um, but you know, getting shocked from here to here, you're probably gonna be all right. There's no like organs or anything like that that's gonna hurt you. Getting shocked from your fingertip all through your, your armpit, you know, that's actually happened to me and it hurts like heck. Especially if you're sweaty, you know, you're like working in a hot environment and you, you accidentally touch something and you're like leaning against something metal, that current's gonna go all the way through you. I actually had a like a line, a red line go all the way through my arm and for weeks like my arm hurt. I had 277 volts though um, and I was leaning on a ceiling grid and that was stupid, but it hurt a lot. Didn't burn me, but I can see physically inside of my body reddening of my tissue. So that's another thing. There's no organs there or anything like that. So probably not going to kill you. Could do some nerve damage though, depending on how long you sit there holding it. Uh, and then going through your heart. Anytime you grab something, you create a path through your heart. That's where the real danger is. That's where um, you could just mess your heart up and then die. So where you get shocked matters. Another thing on that note is the kind of skin that you have. If you have like really young, fresh skin and, and you don't haven't worked with your hands a lot, your skin tissue is gonna be a lot softer and you know, probably like more current's gonna be able to go through. If you're like an old knobby handed man that's been turning wrenches their whole life, you have calloused, crazy hard hands. So the amount of resistance that your hands offer to electrical current is gonna be different than somebody else. If you are looking for continuing education, Electrician U is approved as a continuing education provider. So if you like watching videos like this, why not watch videos like this to get your continuing education? No more of those boring click screens. So there's a link in the description below. It says continuing education. Click that, check your state and get your continuing education today. So what I am going to show is what it's like to get shocked with 120 volts but rather than shocking myself, I'm going to use chicken. So we have some uh, chicken that we have put in electrolyte water. So this has been soaking for about 48 hours. Whole reason that we put electrolyte water is just to make it more conductive. Um, I, I think in general, like our skin's really conductive just because we have electrolytes in our body. Like for instance, if you're out in the field and you're sweating all day long, and it's really hot, 
you sweat a lot of that salt out of your body, so that's why they say make sure you're drinking a lot of you know, Gatorade, electrolytes, so that you can gain more conductivity in your body because our entire body is electrical signals. So constantly, the more conductive we are within our body, the better our brain works and everything like that. So anyways, to try to simulate a little bit more realistically, I think, of what our body is going to be like, we have electrolyte water. And I'm also gonna show just water in general. Water is a conductor, but it's just not a very good conductor. So this is like some filtered good water. Um, when we put 120 volts in it, probably nothing's gonna happen. But once I start adding some electrolytes to the water, you'll see that it'll actually start to boil and that's gonna be to simulate a little bit uh, more of like fluid inside of our body where this is simulating actual like muscle tissue and skin. Also, don't do this at home. I'm a master electrician. I have the proper PPE to wear and I know what I'm doing with electricity. So I am going to use some PPE for this. I'm gonna use these sweet snowboarding climb goggles that they sent me. I'm also gonna use a set of hot gloves. These are rated for 120 or 1,000 volts. I got some leather protectors on there and a multimeter. So let's break into it. All right, so I've got 120 volts, black and white, and I'm gonna put that in this water. I've got a clamp on ammeter right here so we can actually see how much current's flowing. So if we put 120 in, this is live right now, you don't see anything happening in there. There's actually on the multimeter nothing going on either. That doesn't necessarily mean there's not current, that just means there's not enough current for this specific multimeter to measure anything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some electrolytes in there and then we'll see what happens. All right, so when we put electrolytes in the water, it makes the water more conductive. And you can actually see Currents flowing from hot to neutral, and we have a load two point four, two point something like that. So we have two point four amps of current flowing through that fluid. That's a decent amount of fluid too, because if we only need ten to hundred milliamps going through a heart, like that would kill us immediately. <laughs> oh, <that's> so gross. <laughs> I mean, it smells like gross chicken. All right. <laughs> All right, now let's see what human skin would be like. Look at that. Oh yeah. So if you get shocked, oh God, it smells, it smells terrible. Yeah, if you get shocked, this is what happens if you are held on to the circuit. Obviously, when we get shocked out in the field, it's usually just like a, bzz, you know, nothing really happens. I mean, but look at how quickly damage to the skin tissue happens. So if we are, if we have that happening, we can see it's less current flow, but the tissue is also a lot thicker tissue. So it's not water, current can't flow as quickly, but it is still flowing. But even 0.2 amps, that's still two hundredths of an amp. That's still enough to kill you if, it, if you had an organ in between where this path of current was going. All right, so as you can see, we have a little bit different conductivity. If we use uh, electrolyte water, that's a little bit more simulating the inside of our you know, bodily fluid and things like that. We're gonna have less resistance there, so we're gonna have more current flowing uh, deeper inside of the fluids inside of our body. If we look at just raw muscle tissue, which this is just chicken muscle tissue, it's gonna simulate more of what our skin is. Now the surface of my skin is dry, the surface of this is wet, so it's still not even that great of a comparison, but it's probably the closest thing you can get. But as you can see, I mean, that's that's damage to skin tissue. So if you, the, the amount of time that you have to exposure of electrical current running through your body, the more damage that you're gonna have, both inside the tissue and at the surface. Um, but if it's just a very quick thing, then you know, you'll still have current going through you, but it's not gonna be as bad of damage. So 120 volts with the amount of current that was flowing through this chicken, if it was on either side of your heart where that circuit exists, that's enough current to stop your heart, to ca cause arrhythmia, to cause you know like a, a, a beating of your heart that's different than your natural rhythm. Like it can kill you, absolutely. So don't ever let anybody tell you that 120 volts can't kill you or cause serious amount of harm. It's all based off of how much resistance are you offering to that current flow. So thank you for watching. Everyone out there, be safe. Make sure you get PPE and you're not working on live circuits unless you're a trained electrician. Love you crazy people. I'll see you next week. All right, for those of you that are still watching and you're super nerds like me, I got something extra for you. Let's go talk about code for a minute. 
So what kind of codes and standards do we have around this whole um, working on things live thing to whether or not something could hurt you? This is the NFPA 70E. So the first thing we can look at is table 130.4 EA. It says shock protection approach boundaries to exposed energized electrical conductors or circuit parts for alternating current systems. So we're gonna look at our nominal system voltage, say we're at 120 volts in this case, that means that if there's an exposed movable conductor, then that limited approach boundary is 10 feet. And that's talking about a general rule you can see because this is a handbook, they actually have a 600 volt motor control cabinet right here. It's saying that the limited approach is this 10 foot region all the way around here. This is three foot six, but this is talking about a exposed fixed circuit part. So if we have a movable conductor, right, we need more room away from that. If there is a uh, exposed fixed circuit part, so something that is fixed, but it is live, then it has three foot six inches. So it's not gonna be moving anywhere. So our limited approach is a little bit closer than that. Well, quite a bit closer than that, three feet, six inches. So this entire area says unqualified persons are not allowed within the limited approach boundary unless permitted by 130.4F. Three. Then we have the restricted approach boundary, which is another zone on the inside of that. And that's even closer to that piece of material. And that says qualified persons are not allowed within the restricted approach boundary unless permitted by 130.4G. Right, so all of that sounds great and fancy and corporate and awesome, right? It's not talking about most people that are just like, ah, I'm just gonna go in that panel, take that breaker out, not worry about it. There are rules for this stuff. Um, this is, something for employers and employees to use as a guidepost to when working on electrical equipment. Um, but if you are curious about like, what is the right thing? How are we supposed to be treating live circuits? This is the standard you wanna look for. So be safe out there. Um, don't work on live stuff if you don't have to. And most of the time you don't have to, even if it's just your boss screaming at you, you know what, $20 for that hour that he's paying you is not worth you risking your life over. So um, within reason, you know, like get training, know when it's okay to work safe and then don't work safe when it's not safe. Anyways, I love you crazy people and I will see you in the next one.